I'm going to throw the commentary to you guys, but first let's hear from uh, one of our players who has been eliminated already. He is disowned. Okay, so uh, for all the European players still left, Psycho and Nudge, I'd say Psycho needs to keep forcing Glacier Knights. He's doing that excellently, and obviously the build not overpowered at all. Oh, disowned. <laughs> You know, just keep putting those four glaciers, <laughs> four marines into counter the glacier knights. <laughs> oh, nudge! It, it just kind of shows you the the relationship that these players have with each other. Yeah. And, and being able to joke around, but also have respect for one another at the end of the day. And uh, of course, nudge having to play play for his life right now. Uh, Seiko in a little bit better of a position, so maybe he can take some of that uh, advice from this zone, if, if it is advice, quote unquote. Uh, but getting into the fourth game of, uh, of the group here, the fourth and final game, looking at Seiko with a two-star water spirit, round four. Also, would be, would be cool to see if Lucky has already decided to go with her patented open four, just a quick check over on Lucky's board. And of course, we do have the exact same thing. Maybe playing it a little bit differently and uh, possibly looking at players going open fort into it. We don't see anybody else going open fort into her open fort just yet. Uh, Nudge, of course, beating Lucky. I see Nudge has got a, um, well, he's, he's picked up a couple of things. He's maybe got a, a warrior start right now. Maybe thinking of a beast warrior, which has been quite successful for players so far. He looks like he's going to think. We'll see how he does. I think he ends up losing just ever so slightly. You were going to say he was going to win that. Yeah, I was you? thinking yeah. he was close. <laughs> Uh, taking a look at the items though, Lucky with a very good start. However, those those items aren't necessarily Night Glacier specific, right? That's three quarters of a refresher orb along with a uh, you know a cloak as well as the shield there. Nothing really for giving extra damage to Light Blade Knight. So yeah. just I, it, it's just kind of hindering to to play the same. The same build over and over, no matter what items you get, no matter what anybody else is doing, right? So it, it would be interesting to see if she ends up getting what she needs this game. Uh, taking a look over at Kong here, two, two Phantom Queens early. It's actually a really good it start, is, yeah. uh, starting unit, but then you want to switch out of it. Unless, unless you're going assassins for sure, and, but, and assassins have not been that good this tournament. Yeah, don't get baited into that. That's yeah. that's just bait. I, I mean, Seiko got no items by the way over the first three rounds, which. I have to ask, I thought that there was a clause in item generation where if you killed five units, five neutral creeps without getting an item, you were guaranteed an item. I'm just wondering if that's just not in the PC version. Apparently not. Apparently not. Well, it feels bad for Seiko because he's got zero items to start off with, although he is still at 100%, so he must be doing something right with the uh, the units that he's got, and indeed that two-star water spirit early on. Uh, is he thinking about assassins right now? That's the question. He's got that. No. No, he's not. He's got the winner Cairo Terran on the board, yeah, uh, on yeah. the bench. So that's giving me hope that he's not going for assassins. He's going to take a note of our Japanese and South Korean players' books. I'm sure he's going to take the Flaming Wizard, right? Uh, Picked up the Skybreaker. I think he'll take the other Skybreaker and the Flaming Wizard here, right? Ah, uh, picks up the Ripper. Interesting. Interesting to actually watch his entire turn, of course. So I would say if he wins this, he picks up the Flaming Wizard. Yeah. Flaming Wizard is. Arguably a better unit than the Phantom Queen early early game. It's almost along the same lines of Dwarf Sniper. Yeah, right? it's just one of those units that you can do a lot of damage with. And yeah, there you go. So he waits until he actually wins the round to get that third gold to buy it. But I think just having that in it instead of the Phantom Queen would have been a better option overall. And it could potentially beat somebody else on their board, which can put him into a middling situation instead. So there are currently two other 100 percenters going into round six land is still finishing his match and i see the swords battling each other and he does go 100 percent now as well into round seven so there's three people 100 percent round seven wow it's a pretty good high roll lobby for these guys a two-star skybreaker picked up for uh, seiko he even with no items he's in a pretty strong position um, I would love to see Nudge, this game, manage his early economy a lot better. Because something that has been a fault of Nudge, from what we've seen so far, 
is that he ends up with the lowest goal generation by round 15 out of any player in this lobby, which is really hitting him way too hard when it comes to um, to early game goal generation. There we go. I, I, this is what I, this is what I wanted to see. Sell off the board that you have no intention of using, and he does indeed do that. Yeah, Philip playing that game of chicken here, and not pulling, not pulling oh, he lucky. He's, he's lucky ruined pulled it for Phillip. lucky again. Yeah. But Philip's got no way of qualifying, right? So maybe he's just done this because he's had to play against this all the time, the whole right? tournament, the whole tournament, yeah, right? He's, he's played against like he's this probably, entire he's probably tournament. just said, "I've had enough," and he's ruined it. He's ruined it for Lucky again. And he's got a little smirk on his face. I, I mean, think he's feeling pretty good about I it. I mean, why not, right? If you're if you've been thwarted by the open fort glacier strategy over and over again and he's even he's even going glacier knights himself by the way he's even open forting into glacier knights himself well now he's got the upper hand over lucky the only thing is he's he's got to be careful that he doesn't pull lucky on his board yeah uh, of course but at this point i would i would kind of be interested to see how Lucky's playing this, if she's actually going to throw some units onto the board. So she doesn't, but she's close to a, a three-star. She's got a little smile on her face. She realizes that she's been, she's been sabotaged. She's been griefed. Yeah, she's I been griefed. That's, that's the word, griefed. She's been griefed <laughs> pretty heavily. She has almost got a three-star Frost Knight, though, by the way. Yeah. Look at, look at these two. They're playing against each other right now. Yeah. <laughs> They're having a little battle versus each other. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised neither of them has used the uh, the in-game chat there just to put a little smiley or uh, something <laughs> along those lines. But uh, taking a look at the win streaks, five, five or or three. Oh, Philip, three people with Philip drew lucky. Five. By the way, Philip's lost his lose streak yeah. and he drew lucky as well. So they basically sabotaged each other. We knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Right. Both but, of them doing that. We knew it was going to happen. Do you remember when I said that the word, the best case, or sorry, the, the average scenario for a double open forter is they literally sabotage each other? That's basically what's happened this game. Yeah. And and they know it. And that's and that's like yeah. That's exactly what we thought was going to happen. Uh, early dragon with land. I, I don't think this is going to go 100% into round 10. I, I feel like this is a bit of a weak composition up against Arch Devil, though. He's he's pretty strong. They've got a pretty uh, strong. I think Arch Devil's pretty strong in this one. A few two stars. This is going to be very close. I think having three people 100%ing into round 10 would be. Insane. Yeah, I think uh, Lan's definitely lost his position there. Kong, however, does not. Something that is massively underrated and probably what has got Lan to this position so far. Lan is... actually. No, oh, he lost. I was say. Um, if that Venom 1v9. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I say was it. like, wow. Uh, but Venom's ult is actually really, really strong. And some people kind of massively underestimate it, but it's got great single target damage. So. Uh, playing Dragon with Venom early on can be pretty can be pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. Seiko, 100%, 10 gold, also has early Dragon Knight, look Dragon at, Mages. Look at those Skybreakers as well. I mean, I mean, Seiko, if he's looking to secure himself a spot in the final, he's looking pretty good to do so. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is exactly what he needs, of course, and, and he's got to be feeling pretty good about it. Also, Land is the other player that we really need to keep an eye on. He's the one that's on the bubble. He's in fourth position right yeah. now, so he needs to have a good game to kind of solidify himself, not leave things up to RNG or, or matchmaking or tie-breaking and, and placements and all these random things that can possibly knock him out as well. But yeah. uh, right now, looking to probably switch into Dragon Mages with some Cave Clan Warrior Frontline. Not a bad build if he starts picking up that you know, two-star swordman or something along those lines. But remember, Archdevil, Seiko, and Kong are already the ones that are in top positions. So if they end up getting top three again, that, that essentially shuts out a lot of the lobby's potential to even come back in this game. And, and Nudge is one of those players that, that even definitely needs first. Well, I think, honestly, if Seiko, Kong, and Archdevil go one, two, three this game, it's allows them the opportunity to get into that fourth place much more because land being on the on the cusp is the only one that would fall out and the the players that are unreachable maintain to be unreachable or, or continue to be I believe Nudge is on seven points right now. See, if he were to get first, he would get 16 and I believe land is on 14. So land would have to literally do sixth or worse to even tie break with Nudge and Lucky would need to do 
fifth or worse to tie break with Nudge because fourth is five points. No, she needs to do f uh, fourth or worse to, to, to if Nudge got first, of course. So yeah, um, and that's that's I mean not that uncommon for that to happen. No, of course. I mean, Lucky's not in a great spot right now. Land is okay though. Land is in a good spot. He would have to do. He would have to essentially drop pretty heavily in the mid game to put himself in a spot where Nudge even had a chance of qualifying. And Nudge would would actually have to turn his game around. Although his economy is good, his HP total is dropping a little bit right now. I don't know. I think. I think there's. Uh, I think there's an opening here. Yeah. I really do. I, I honestly think there's an opening if Land doesn't. Uh, honestly, all eyes are on Land right now. If the top three do well again, it's gonna it's gonna emphasize that even more because they're taking points away from the other players that can actually take it instead. However, taking a look at Kong here, also going Dragon Mage, as we see quite a few Dragon Mage players has a a pair of two star God of Wars already, which is really really good. And he's up to 40 economy. He's 100%, as is Seiko. Two 100 percenters in this game. It does mean, in general, when you have two 100 percenters in a single game, you generally tend to beat down the lower part of the lobby pretty heavily in terms of HP totals. So yeah, especially if they are open forwarding into not lose streaking. Yes, right. Open forwarding into middling with two 100 percent players is disastrous for those for those players that didn't keep the streaks. But. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Lucky is at that three-star Frost Knight now. She has indeed got the three-star Frost Knight going. We'll see if she can make her Glacier Knight build work. Uh, something that has, you know, we have kind of criticized her about is this inflexibility, and it does seem like she has put herself in a, a position where she does need to get a lot of things to go right for her to uh, to come out on top and actually qualify for the finals. Yeah, I mean, not even. I, I think she is going to beat uh, Sweepy here, but. Just, I would be interested to see where she even put those magic crystals. Okay, I called it wrong now. <laughs> taking a, Frost, taking Knight, a Frost Knight is a bad, page out of your book. It's a bad unit. I look at the, I, I, I don't know if they can hover over and see the actual attack damage of Frost Knight, um, but it's bad. It's like bad for a three-star unit. I don't actually know where you hover on the PC version to find out, maybe over the, the avatar itself. Yeah, okay. It's 190. That's quite low for a three-star unit. And then he has to actually stack up his ultimate to, to further increase that damage. Um, I know. I, I I agree with you. I, I no, always I, not, I always I'm, used I'm, to make the meme that I'm not a three you, star a three star frost knight was a waste of eight gold because that's more that's eight gold that you don't need to spend on him for the synergies that he's really there to provide. It's not nine gold. No, but you need him for at least the synergy. You need at least one gold on him. Oh, I've got you. Right. right. I thought you were yeah. saying like it's like eight gold. Yeah, it's eight gold further than the single gold to get the uh, to yeah. get the boss knight. Got it. Now I'm, I'm on board with you. Got it. Okay. Don't, I, I wasn't lecturing you, Clay. I was just. No. I was just I like know, no, no, I know. spouting rubbish. Spouting rubbish. I like it. Nudge is uh, unfortunately struggling here in this game. He's got a good economy this time around, but his HP total is taking a beating because of it, and he's tied on HP right now with Lucky. Yeah, several players looking at Dragon Mages here, uh, including Nudge. Nudge just hoping to find his wings. Finds a pair there, picks up a two-star Dragon Mage, and now is close to six mages, just needs a couple more, or just basically one more mage to complete the six mage uh, however, doesn't have a Dragonite yes. and is playing Dragon Mages, which is not really how you play Dragon Knights, Dragon Mages. But you do need the Dragon Knight to uh, to make this build work. He has got the Spirit Bonus, which if he gets lucky should help him beat this Wolf Round pretty easily, and I think he's going to get away with it here quite nicely. So he'll get through the the Wolf Round, which can be quite uh, uncertain when you're playing Mage comps in general. These neutral rounds they can be quite difficult to deal with. Yeah, Lucky not having any problems here. Oh, she got refresh on. Yeah, she was only one away from it. Yeah. You know, I, I would say a, a lot of these players in this lobby, if they get three quarters of a refresh orb round three, they would instantly start looking at mages. And I think that narrow-mindedness uh, might be hurting her. Yeah, because round. there aren't many good targets for a, uh, a, a refresh orb in Glacier Knights. The, like I've talked about before, I kind of like it on Desperate Doctor if you get him to three-star. I quite like it on uh, a two-star 
Fortune Teller, because it gives you eight seconds of immunity for two units most of the time. Yeah. So surprisingly, with that being said, Lucky, though, is is rolling her knights. Yeah. She's she's actually very close and al also healthy-ish and economized to a point where she could actually still make this work even with the loss of the lose streak uh, against Philip. Uh, but taking a look at Nudge here, getting his mages off, of course, the Thunder Spirit with that massive AoE damage. Of course, we, we talked about it a couple times, the Water Spirit being kind of underrated, maybe a little bit coming into the tournament, but being used by several players in, in many different rounds in, in several different countries, uh, doing very well. Philip's got a pretty good start to his Glacier Knight comp here as well. He's got the two-star Light Blade, the two-star uh, Hell Knight. Still running with the uh, the Soul Breaker there as well, just leveling up where he can. Nudge actually rolled down pretty extensively, I guess, to find some upgrades and some units for his six mages. He is just waiting on either a uh, Tortola. Well, it can only be a Tortola at level seven, but it got a, uh, level eight could indeed be the God of Thunder. And then he'll have that six mages activated. He also needs the Dragon Knight to, uh, as uh, Clay said, activate his uh, Dragon Composition properly. Yeah, Arch Double in a little bit of a situation here. Yeah, he very quickly dropped off the face of the Earth. Yeah, he's going six warriors, two beasts. Uh, he does need to start finding that poisonous worm to get a little bit more of that backline damage in. Possibly a Berserker, of course, but uh, 45 gold, 41% HP, taking heavy damage against Kong right now is going to put him into a little bit of a, a situation where he needs to start spending that gold at 28% HP just to kind of protect that a little bit more. And he does have a one-star Red Axe Chief in play right now. So rolling down as he goes. Finds himself a Pirate Captain pair there. Doesn't need to roll down too far to get some of the units that he needs. Yeah, He's, not bad. 40 gold still. Yeah. Picked up several upgrades. He's pretty close to making this comp work for him. He just needs to hit a couple little extra upgrades. That Pirate Captain 2, the uh, the Doom 2 would be nice as well. We did see him pick up a Razor Claw last round in order to farm the gold from the Unicorn, but then he sold the Razor Claw. However, in a Beast Warrior comp, Razor Claw is actually a very crucial unit for him, so I'm not sure if that was just like a it, it is force if you're of looking habit to, sale. It is if you're looking to go for four beasts, right? But there are Beast Warrior comps that run only two beasts. If you want to fit Marine in as well, you, you usually only go two beasts, and there are so many mages in this lobby that you definitely want Marine in there, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from there, but would you rather have a two-star Red Axe Chief than a two-star Razor Claw? Uh, I'd rather have a Razor Claw over a Tusk Champion. Because, unless you're looking to three-star the Tusk Champion, which he looks like he is. That's true, too. I mean, he does have six warriors, though, so that could potentially... Red Axe can be pretty uh, underrated. His taunt is actually pretty solid at level three. Yeah, level three, I, I agree with that. And I, I, I think just having the option to go Razor Claw would be smart. Yeah, a level three Razor Claw is pretty insane, so I agree with you on that, on that front. And he's at 16% HP, 51 gold, greeting into, greeting into round 20. Of course, this is one of our players that is pretty much already qualified. Was he? He was number one. He was number two. He's he's always oh, out. He's, he's out. He's literally just out. Yeah. You round 19. Okay. Greeted it. So the only people that can catch him right now are technically Lucky and Land, because he's on 19 points. No, La Land is at 14 points. Yeah, Land yeah. is good. In, no. Land's position is up for up for grabs. Right. So Archdevil was was tied with Seiko at 19 points. Okay, I see what you're saying. Seiko is basically guaranteed second from this point forward. Um, Archdevil, the only people that can catch him would be Land. If Land positions well and Lucky does not get first, Lucky cannot catch Archdevil. So this is now really down to, I would say, land and lucky and nudge, depending on where people place. So you're saying Archdevil actually could be pushed out of this entire tournament? Right. Archdevil literally cannot get out of fourth. The okay. worst Archdevil can place is fourth, I think, from this point forward. I think it's it's, on, it's definitely me. messing things up a bit. It's definitely making some things interesting. It's making fourth place more interesting. Okay. 
it's no, it doesn't actually. It makes fourth place less interesting. So basically, it almost guarantees land fourth place. Yeah. So that means that Lucky and Nudge essentially have almost almost no way to make it out right now. Right, because Land had to have gotten eighth, no points. Now he's guaranteed points, so he's gonna move up. No, land needed um, minimum. <laughs> where, where is our statistics? Man? Where is our statistic, man? <laughs> land needed basically sick. So as long as Land gets above sick, he's okay. It's just let's just say it's for me. It's too close to call. Yeah, it's right too now. close to call. There's a lot yeah, of we, things let's that not can get happen. Bogged, let's not get bogged down in here because otherwise he's going to detract from where we are. And uh, detracting from Lucky having a three-star Hell Knight. End up still losing here to Nudge, who's found a two-star Tortola, by the way. That's a good position for Nudge to be in with a six mage comp. Yeah, and as we see now that he might still have a chance. Lucky with that three-star Hell Knight. Also some pretty decent... Uh, items on that with the Heaven's Gift, of course, the Refresher Orb on Desperate Doctor. If she is able to get that Desperate Doctor to 3-star, eventually a little bit later on down the road, that would be an extremely good option Yes, of for course. that uh, yeah. Orb of Refresh that we kind of talked about going into the game. Of course, of course. And uh, really, it's uh, there is a two-horse race between her and Land right now, like we talked about. So keep your eyes on the positions of Lucky and Land. Land is four points ahead of Lucky right now. So it could be uh, a close race for that fourth position now that uh, Archdevil is out. Yeah, Nudge kind of just saving up those water spirits right now. And up against Lucky, a huge two-star Tortola ultimate straight through the Knights, but is going to get taken out by Lucky this time on his side. Take a little bit more damage here, dropping him down to 32%. Sweet P down to 4% HP with 33 gold left over. I would imagine that he's gonna start spending that. Also, Beast Warrior, as we see uh, a couple players Kong, running. Kong finally lost, by the way, the first loss of the entire game. 95% HP right now. And that was to Nudge and his two-star Portal Elder, of course, in the mages. I'd like to see where Land is. Land is really interesting to me because he is, again, one of the contenders for that final spot in this lobby. Uh, Sweet Pea is obviously playing a very janky Beast Warrior build right now, and this could be a rough uh, uh, matchup for him versus that three-star Hell Knight. Of, of Philip as well. Philip also on a three-star Hell Knight. Yeah, Lively Knight for Philip, stacked up with two Frantic Masks. However, at 10 gold, 25% HP, I do think... I, I do think Lucky's in a better position yeah. right now, currently, with the amount of gold left over and the amount of uh, units that she actually has. Uh, not going necessarily for a, a three-star Life Blade Knight just yet, or maybe she hasn't found any extra ones so far. Yeah. Um, possibly because Philip has gotten those already. And that is one thing to be aware of, maybe on Lucky's side, passing over those Light Blade Knights because you know Philip already has a three star. And uh, Philip passing over the, the Hell Knights because you know no, Lucky Philip, already has Philip's a Philip's already star. got a three star Hell Knight. Philip has a three star Hell Knight as well? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh yeah. no, no, no. Like, okay, no, you're right. Three star Light Blade Knight. I'm yeah, they both have one of each. each. Yeah. Yeah. I think you don't pass it up when you're playing uh, Knights anyway. Nudge has got the, um, the Dark Spirit in his comp, by the way, to, in an attempt to try and beat these Knight players, but you can see Lucky just running through them right now. Yeah, Sweepy here with the Beast Warrior build. Looks like this is it gonna him. be it for Sweepy, taking seventh. So again, with the rankings, I I'm not sure. That I think there's so much math going on right he, now he, that he had very little chance to qualify anyway. Yeah, I know, so, yeah. but but it does affect the other players still because we know now that they can get a little bit more points. Basically, Land needs to position above six, then he guarantees qualification almost. Um, above six. Six uh, uh, or above or above six? Above six. He can't get six. So just one more needs to come out. Okay, there's... It's something like that. I'm going to... A little bit more. Okay, a little bit more. Lucky's on 10 points and, and Land is on 14. So oh, Lucky could get first place and she could then tie 19 points with the rest of the... With it's, Archdevil. It's, with Archdevil. It's, it's crazy. There's a lot of stuff that can go on right now. <laughs> We do have our statistics man back here, crunching the numbers, trying to give us some information, uh, but also maybe withholding some information because it makes things a little bit more exciting. Yeah, I don't want to get, I don't want to get, bog, I don't want to get bogged well. down in it. I don't want to get bogged down in it because there is a lot that can happen in this game. We are definitely not set for our top four. 
Um, Seiko in a great position. Uh, Kong also in a great position. They look pretty solid. Archdevil will be hitting himself because he has now at least thrown his position into contention. Um, but yeah, let's not get bogged down and let's take a look at where Nudge is right now with his build. Did he just sell off all of those water spirits? He was one water spirit away from a three-star water spirit. No, he was. He actually had six water spirits. Ah, okay. Um, he didn't make them together because he knew that he was probably going to end up selling them, which I think is the correct option. He does have two dark spirits on his bench already at level eight, which is very lucky uh, on his end, but ties two Tortola Elders at the same time, as you like to call them, the Kamehameha's. Kamehameha. <laughs> Kamehameha's back and forth between Nudge and Seiko. Leaving a nice little crystal ball there for us to look at. Philip with the three-star Light Blade Knight. A little interesting positioning here for the Knight's Glacier, not really protecting he the Light Blade Knight. He actually needs uh, two he uh, Hell Knights to find himself an egged three-star Hell Knight, which would be great for him. It's having a look at Kong with a three-star God of War. Great front line. Has got the God bonus, but obviously has been prevented from activating because there is indeed dragon and human. Uh, what else? You have you, the spirit bonus there as well. Lots of things preventing that from fully activating, but he has got almost six mages to work with right now too. Well, he has a mage on the bench, which is the flaming wizard. Yeah. But he instead values spirit the bonus. water spirit. I don't think that's the right call. I don't personally. think that's the right call either. Oh, Nudge is out. Yeah, Nudge is going to be out here. And so uh, almost almost sure that that will be it for Nudge WK in this tournament. I think he had uh, not necessarily the best cards thrown his way, uh, but did it the, pretty much the best he could with what was given to him. Philip now in fifth position, 25% HP, land. Not too far behind, 35% HP, tied with Seiko, or very closely tied, 36, 39, and then Kong, the lone leader. I'd like to check in on Land, because, because Land is obviously one of those guys contending for uh, the top spot, and I believe uh, fourth minimum would guarantee him, that would guarantee him a tiebreaker, right? No matter what happens, it would guarantee him a tiebreaker, so he is looking to try and get fourth in this situation here, but he hasn't got the strongest build versus these very heavy Glacier Knight builds coming out from both Lucky and Philip. And if he were to get fifth, that would throw him up in the air and his fate would be essentially down based to on Lucky. Based on Lucky. His fate would be based on where Lucky positions. He is taking some massive damage here. 11, dropping him down to 24%. Kong actually losing his to Philip, not by too much. Kong also already very, very high in points already. However, Lucky, Looking like she's leveling up to nine on her board and throwing in the... Is she running? Yeah, second Desperate Doctor there, looks like. So, uh, again, we talked about the, the three-star Desperate Doctor being very important for her. Of course, she does have the Berserker two-star, which... If she had that as a defector instead, throwing in the Storm Shaman level nine would be extremely good, especially against these two, possibly three mage players, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the three mage players left in the lobby. Yeah, so that would be that would be great for her, and possibly transitioning into that as well uh, would be something to think about so, for sure. So Desperate Doctor has an added bonus against mage players that it can actually prevent the Totolo Elder uh, channeling. If you get the stun off, so her adding two gives her two chances at hitting a Totolo Elder with the Desperate Doctor stun, which would stop it from channeling its ultimate and dealing the maximum amount of damage. Yeah, which is Which is point. a good way of dealing with it. And then she could even, if she wanted to, at level nine, find a way of fitting in Marine or find a way of going for the uh, the Storm Shaman, which she could use the egg for if she really wanted to. Yeah, I think she's in a, an interesting situation right now because she can either go Marine or she ends up egging the... Oh, gosh. So she had it's she had 10 out of 9 on the board. It dropped the Light Blade Knight back. Of course, she's still going to win it. No problem. Yes, yeah. But uh, she she's deciding, I think, to go with the... Storm Shaman instead of going up to level 10 and throwing in the Marine bonus. Land is in a pretty rough spot right now because if he's to get this position right here, he, he's got a three-star God of War. This is definitely going to help him along his way, but he's not in the best position ever 
He's uh, actually doesn't have six mage. Oh, he's playing three mages. This massively reduces the damage output of his composition. Massively reduces the damage output of his composition. Yeah, this is going to be really rough for him because this is this is putting him in dire situation if he goes out this round up against the number one player in the lobby. Both of the two star or three star God of Wars here. Again, the Tortola Elders in the corner. Ghost Ship comes in, he's, he's has out, a huge surely. stun, but the Tortola Elder lands a very nice ultimate, but this is going to be it. Oh, oh no, a massive, in. massive Tortola Elder ultimate to keep him in the game just barely at the very end. There's 6% HP, but he's still on the chopping block. He is not very strong, and I pretty sure he loses to almost every single player in this I, lobby I, right now. I think there is very few matchups that he wins as a three mage player. Three mage is not strong outside of gods for a reason. It's uh, magic damage reduction is, is lower than it used to be. Uh, people play six mages because it had a buff rather than a nerf. Um, and yeah, I think Land is in, is in a rough spot right now. He doesn't even have a two-star pirate captain to, uh, to kick things off. Remember, if Lucky can indeed get herself first, that is, that is potentially qualifying for her. That is potentially qualifying. And she's going up against Land here. She shouldn't have too much issue going up against him with the, the caliber of comp that she's got right now. Although I say that, it's a little bit closer than you would have thought. Looking fine, but Land is actually going to go out here at fifth, leaving the door wide open for Lucky to clutch this one out. She does still have quite a bit of work to go between Psycho, Philip, and Kong still in the match. Philip with his knights taking those away from Lucky. However, Lucky's got a three star Light Blade Knight, three star Hell Knight, if I'm not mistaken. No, she doesn't have her three star Light Blade Knight, but she is putting in the Tsunami Stalker. Now she has the decision if she wants to actually switch in Marine eventually once she gets another Siren or keep the Storm Shaman. I would say in in this situation, I would probably put in the Marine instead because she doesn't have the Shaman, the bonus. shaman yeah. bonus and Defector, correct. Oh, that's a lot of damage going on to her comp right now from Seiko. Seiko uh, still has to deal with that three-star Totola Elder, though. Sorry, that three-star Hell Knight, which is one of the main carries versus Mage compositions. The Hell Knight is not going down, but it is going to take a final Totola Elder ultimate to the face and Lucky's going to take four damage here. Loses that massive nine win streak that she had going on, but is going to be enough to take the number one spot over here. Now, all players at level 10 with the exception of Philip. However, he again is that other Night Glacier player. So Kong and Seiko have guaranteed qualification here, so it doesn't matter where they place. Um, and Philip is Philip is out anyway, out, yeah. so Philip is pretty much out a hundred percent. If Lucky gets first, she gets qualification. She beats uh, Land, and she gets qualification. And look at what she's done. She's actually made a second Storm Shaman, uh -huh. sold the Desperate Doctor that had it the the Orb refresher, refresh. on, yeah. And I think that is an extremely, it's, extremely smart move of her to it absolutely is to make right now. And she's at level 10, and she looks so good to t potentially get yeah, first place 5, here. 5,000 damage between those two Storm Shaman Ultimates. She is she is showing that she's got what it takes. If, if she gets second, she, she tie breaks with land. If she's first, she wins and goes through. And I, I have seen the Open 4 Glacier Knight qualify two rounds now. Uh, which has been insane. Even when her open fort got sabotaged in two games, she's brought herself into a position where she is tenably taking a top three spot away. This is uh, this is quite the story for Lucky, who has played the same strategy now for seven games in a row. Yeah, it's pretty insane. And it's there's so many different things that have happened, yep. uh, and she's just played around it. That's it. Uh, we do see that Philip went against Lucky last round there, but lost by eight. That just shows you how strong that... Storm Shaman Ultimate was. See if anything gets picked up here. Seiko's actually got Mjolnir here because he's got the Wraith uh, Shard, but it's, uh, it's Mjolnir on the Dragon Knight and a Dragon Knight composition. Uh, it's a Dragon Mage composition. It's, it, I wouldn't say it's the strongest thing in the world. Um, he has now picked up God of Thunder, which may give him some potential outs versus uh, the competition 
right now. We'll have to see. He's also very close to... Oh, there he is. A three-star Winter Kairok Terran, which is going to help him as a bit more of a frontline tank. It'll also give him a, a, sh a shorter cooldown on that ability to allow him to keep some of his units uh, safer. Yeah, he's also got an egg in the shop, which he can buy to potentially get that God of Thunder to two-star as well. Hal Knight three-star with a Heart of Tarrasque for Philip. He is also just... Barely hanging on, 7% HP, all players now fully rolled down to basically zero gold, which is always exciting to see. Up against Seiko though, of course Lucky is looking to have Philip knocked out here as quick as possible. And... He's, he's, it, he's just about squeezing through. He's hanging through. on. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. Kong, on the other hand, not fine up against Philip, is going to take about six damage there, putting him down to 8%. Lucky is looking at this and feeling very, very confident right now. Uh, of course, her matchup against, I think, all players is really nice because she does counter the mages. She also counters the other knight player as well. So, I mean, is there anything that can happen where she doesn't win this. Is there uh, possible I think Philip's in an okay spot. I think God of Thunder can sometimes sneak through the... I mean, God of Thunder 2 now for Kong. They can sometimes sneak through the Night Shields if you get it positioned quite like... I, mean, I have no idea where you've decided to put your God of Thunder out by himself, but it is what it is. I think... I mean, I'm interested in seeing Lucky versus the Philip matchup, because I think that's the one that we're, we're going to be looking at for the rest of this game. Yeah, this might be it, though, for Philip, as long as that Hell Knight goes down, but it just doesn't die. Switching over to Kong here, he's just fine against Lucky. Lucky being beating Philip with almost no problems. Yeah, seven, that's crazy. Yeah, seven, seven units left on the board still. Well, that's a three-star Desperate Doctor for Philip here. He's picked up another three-star that might help him out. There is a level advantage for Lucky, remember, but Philip does indeed have the Shaman bonus activated because he's running the Defector over the Berserker right now. This is a really tight lobby. I think everybody has a chance of, of winning right now. And a two-star... Uh, oh, is that a refresh orb on Philip's Storm Shaman too? Yeah, wow. absolutely. So, honestly, Philip putting himself in a position right here where he's got a lot of room, and you see that happening right now. <laughs> Oh, that was insane. Philip uh, going up against the other side of the coin. He might be okay here. It's going to be very close with this Lightblade Knight, the Frantic Masks. I think he's going to be fine. He should be able to take out that uh, God of War that does not have the God bonus, so it will attack very slowly. Yeah, excellent call on that uh, on that prediction. Excellent. <laughs> very proud. That Lightblade Knight, of course, shredding through not only just the backline, but the God of War three-star as well. This is a crazy end of the All match. All four players winning their matches. Yeah. For it's, the past it, two rounds, at least. super RNG right now, because it's basically Night Shield RNG versus where the God of Thunder's hit versus a lot of different things, to be honest with you. It's, 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 it's basically going to come down to individual matchup RNG, and the more HP you have, the more chances you have to get it wrong, and that's why Seiko and Lucky are in good spots. Yeah, there's not much that Philip can really roll for here, so he's probably just scouting out the opponent's positioning and trying to match that up as best as he possibly can. Now, here he is up against Lucky, the number one player in the lobby, and also the player that has a chance to go on. Very, very similar builds here. Lightblade Knight trying to shred through the backline to give himself enough HP to stay in this game. And it looks like he's actually going to be just fine here, keeping that HP 7%. Lucky, Lucky took a big hit. Lucky took a big hit versus Kong in the last round. That's what I mean about God of Thunder. Sometimes it can just wipe out everything, and that can be difficult to deal with. Seiko's in a good spot. Kong's still in a continued win streak right now. Um, this is so, 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 so tense. I cannot believe we're in this situation where any one of these players could genuinely take first, and it really comes down to those individual matchups after we get through this uh, Glacier yeah, round. The, gla the Glacier items are going to be insane too. Not only can any player take first, but depending on who takes first means Massive potentially $450,000 yeah. for somebody. Right? So there's... I think she's out! Is this going to be enough? She is at third place. I think that's going to be enough that, to that, kick her out, but I'm not quite sure how the point that, systems are going to shake out. I'm certain. She's not in. Land is in. I'm pretty certain that's the way it is. She needed second to get a at least tie break with Land in this situation, I believe. I'm going to look to my stats guy. 
Yeah, your your EU math might be much better than mine, but I am. He's, he's I'm not going to say he's not telling me. It's a little me. too close. He's to not call telling here, me. In my opinion, there's there's a lot of things that happened yeah. during this round, and uh, honestly, lucky. What a performance! I, I think she made a lot of smart decisions there. She did. She did. Possibly not. Not. I mean, there's there's I, there's just a couple things Let, that could have happened. We can talk about that, it after. We, we can talk about it afterwards, and, right? Uh, Philip here now just destroying through Seiko, and I I think Seiko is. Yeah, he's gonna take it right here. So Philip gets the man, win. That was an insane, insane final there. Look, look, the only thing I can say about our top four in that situation is it was heavily RNG dependent on each individual matchup. There were some Tekkens that came through that were important, but realistically, it came down to, did my Night Shields proc at the right time? And did my Mages attack them, the Knights when their Night Shields were down? Yeah. It, that's essentially what it was. A little bit of Night Shields. I would say also a little bit of positioning uh, with the Orb of Refresh going on to... Siren, I think that was a great decision. I think she just had it in the wrong position. She she had an orb refresh on Siren and didn't protect it. You don't need it to frontline. You don't need to frontline a yeah. Siren when you've got an orb of refresh. Exactly. Right? You wanted to have the yeah. chance and opportunity to get the ultimate off, not just once but twice. And if you do get that off, you have the potential to win. This was this was such a unique story. This particular game because Philip came in as the harbinger of doom for for yeah. the strategy that Lucky was trying to to, to bring out with. Oh, the, he open forted as well. They ruined each other's economy in the early game. Yep. Philip then like hard ground out. Grieved her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So hard. I, was, I, was gonna mention that, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of how to describe exactly what you're talking about. It's poetic in a sense, right? Yeah. Like just the battle from the very beginning to the very end. It ended up working out for both of them somehow. Yeah. Uh, Philip had uh, better itemization and he also had the three star light blade knight, which gives you that an edge. Yeah. Um, the Heart of Tarask on Hell Knight is, in my opinion, the single most powerful item you can have on that unit in the late game yeah. because he just becomes nigh on unkillable with the regeneration that he has. Um, yeah. And that really gave Philip the edge. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, he even said it in his, in his interview. He just, he just had enough of that. That, uh, that strategy of open forwarding into Knight's Glacier. And, and he knew that he wanted to come in with a, a different strategy around it, but I think he figured out the best strategy to it, to beat it, was to join it. It's crazy. And it's like something that the whole lobby was more or less reacting to in, in a certain sense from the uh, Dragon Knight strategy in the round before. Yeah. It's just interesting to see how that kind of develops. I have the official numbers here, but we're, we're going to keep it dramatic. Like, and I don't know if I'm right on this piece of paper. Sure. I'm pretty sure I'm right. But I, I honestly haven't we're gonna put let... as much thought into it as <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Xandra has. I was he like, thinks he well, has it figured out. I think out. I have it figured out. Well, we're about to let it uh, be shown here. Let's take a look at the match results first, and then we're going to move into our final standings. Uh, of course, uh, and, and something as, as we look at these uh, detailed match results, I, I wanted to talk about Land because he seemed like he was in a, like obviously if he plays better, he makes it less nerve wracking for himself, yeah. right? And I felt like he was pretty strong during that game. And I want to, I wanted to ask you guys, like uh, you mentioned he went three mage. Yeah. Like what, what, what did he kind of, what, what kind of went wrong for land there? Because it well, certainly was a lot more nerve wracking than it had to be for land. He went, it went wrong because he went three mage. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> it, it, it is. In this meta, three mages is, is I don't want to say it, but garbage. It actually is garbage. It's, it needs a buff. Yeah. <laughs> if, you're he... if you're listening, Drodo, it needs a buff because it's just it's just not tenable to go three mages these days because Marine is so easy to tech into so many builds uh, and the damage just isn't there. You just don't have enough damage coming out of a three mage comp. Um, I, I think his thought process behind it, he did get a two star Venom, but here just Looking at the leaders Here now, lucky by yep. one point, oh, yep, as man. we, as you yep. suspected. Yep. I, I think basically lucky needed second. Yes, and, and it would have been a tie. Been a tie but I don't know how the tiebreaker no, would have, have gone. I, I have no idea how the tiebreaker okay, would have gone. Okay, I'm hearing that she would have lost the tiebreaker. Uh, she would have so lost she, the tie she needed to win. She needed to win. But she she, she had a close. chance there. Like it was. It what was would have close. been the defining factor for her to, to really secure that win? Or or was her downfall the fact that uh, Psycho, I think it was, was going uh, the same strategy? I, I think if the matchup happened where Psycho went out to Philip. And she got put up against Psycho, won that match, came down to one versus one, her versus Philip, and she protected that Siren. siren. She absolutely had a chance she, to win. She absolutely had Crazy. a chance to win. I think also, um, <laughs> as, as I think her strategy obviously carried her very far, but I think it is also a, a testament to players that are adaptable. 
um, and can 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 take what the game throws at them. I think yeah. um, I, I I really respect her for seven games in a row ma making that work because I couldn't have done the same thing. I definitely would have tilted myself into oblivion by this point. Um, <laughs> but I think the players that have made it through to the top of our of our tournament here have all been incredibly adaptable. They've taken what the game's given them. They've played different builds in the right scenarios. Um, but again, it shows you that. If Lucky can get one point away from the final lobby for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you guys can open Fort Glacier Knight every single game and get to Queen. It's really it's, for now. It's, for now, until the meta changes. Until they get nerfed, which they will. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like you said, it, it's it. Hats off to the eight players now that we officially know are moving on to tomorrow's matchups, and that's going to be at three p.m. Uh, Shanghai time. So. Definitely don't want to miss that, but yeah, best of six tomorrow yeah. as well. So yeah. a little bit that's that'll be very interesting to get into. But um, let, let's reflect on the day, guys, because it, particularly in that last group, I feel like we had a, at least a player or two who really just shined, maybe above the rest. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll I'll just mention some specific results here. Obviously, Archdevil, uh, Kong, and Psycho. Right, Psycho had the most points overall, 26. Fourth, fourth, first, second. Super solid in a semi-final lobby. Like yeah. that's got like for him, that's got to feel great going into the finals. I actually have um, as the Padawan of of, 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 of Nudge. Nudge. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Uh, I my personal belief is that he will get first tomorrow. I wow. think Seiko's going to walk away with four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That would be absolutely insane and a great story behind him yeah. as well. He's such a nice guy, and he if it went to anybody. I mean, he deserves it for sure. He's worked so hard to get here. He's he's sacrificed a lot to get here as well. But yeah. that's not to say that the other seven players in the lobby don't also have no. their own deserving right to it as well. So honestly, at this point, it's it's going to be such a fun day, an exciting day tomorrow uh, to see how everything starts shaking out. And I can't wait to see it just hopefully come down to the wire.